Hi, I'm Rachel. Welcome to my channel where I share a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Today I have a what's for dinner video. Come on, let's get cooking. The first dinner that I'm sharing is breakfast, and this one was so easy and quick. My husband, Bill, actually cooked this for us, and I was a little late grabbing the camera, but as you can see, he pan-fried some ham steaks in a skillet and some butter. I sliced up some avocado, and we had some eggs fried over easy with some buttered toast. I've mentioned many times that breakfast for dinner is one of our go-tos for a quick dinner option. I could eat breakfast food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner any day of the week. It really is my favorite and there are so many ways to serve breakfast food. Next on the menu is walking tacos. If you've ever been camping, you've probably heard of walking tacos where you open up a bag of chips and you put your uh, taco me and your toppings right into the bag well this is the at home version we just add all of the ingredients into a bowl I started by cooking up some taco me and then I just added some lettuce to the bowl first I picked out some of the big hard chewy pieces of lettuce because I just don't like those and so then I just mixed in some shredded cheese with my lettuce and got that all mixed together. I also dressed up this lettuce with some sour cream. I believe my husband, Bill, put some ranch dressing on his. The boys ended up leaving while we were making dinner, so it did end up just being the two of us. The next thing I did was add the taco meat and then some more cheese and then some salsa after that. We had a choice of chili cheese Fritos or Doritos, and I had the Fritos on mine, and Bill had Doritos on his. Of course, you can always make this with whatever toppings that you and your family enjoy. I was using what we had on hand, and so if I ever make this again, it would probably be totally different because I always just kind of go with what we have, but this was a very quick and easy dinner. The next dinner is Mexican tater tot casserole because we had a lot of taco meat left over. To make the meat mixture, I added a can of Rico's nacho cheese. I keep these cans of cheese in the pantry just in case I need them in an unusual time such as this. And I'm adding everything right into the gallon size bag that I saved the taco meat in the day before. I normally put leftovers in a gallon size freezer bag in the refrigerator for one day before they go into the refrigerator into the freezer. If nobody eats them within that time, then I just flatten that bag down flat and then it goes into the freezer to use at a later time. So luckily this taco meat was ready to go. I literally had one drop of salsa left in this jar. So this got added to the bag and then I used um, about half of the other jar. So I'm calling it about a cup of salsa for this recipe. We had some diced bell pepper left over from another day of cooking. So guess what? They got thrown in the bag too. Then I just sealed up the bag tight and gave it a good squish and a shake and smacked it around a little until everything was good and mixed. This part was actually pretty fun.
It doesn't look very appetizing at this point, but trust me, it will be. Next, I added a layer of tater tots to the bottom of a cast iron skillet. The last time I made tater tot casserole, I made it like this with a double layer of tots, and my husband really liked it. And this casserole, it does get crispy on the bottom, and so that's what he liked about it, and I think that I agree with him on that one. So then I'm just pouring out that meat and cheese and salsa mixture on top of that layer of tater tots. Hats. And this was a really simple and easy way to make this mixture and all I had to do was toss my bag when I was done. There was no bowl to clean up. And so I just worked on getting that meat and salsa and cheese mixture spread around evenly on top of those tots. It is nice and thick but as the everything gets warmed up and um, cooks down then it does kind of spread a little on its own too and it gets um, really gooey and oozes all over those tater tots and makes them really um, good so now that I have my mixture all spread out then I'm going to add another layer of tots on top of that And then after that, you can season your tots. I didn't because I knew that there was going to be a lot going on inside of this with the taco meat and the flavored of flavoring of the nacho cheese and so the salsa too. So I just left mine unseasoned and they were fine. I figured we kind of add like hot sauce and stuff like that to pretty much everything that we eat. So we were going to have a lot of seasoning going on and it didn't really need any more salt, pepper, seasoning, salt or anything like that in my opinion. But you could always do whatever you want to with yours. I mean, if you even wanted to add more taco seasoning for extra flavor or like some ranch seasoning would probably be good on top of those tater tots. Um... But like I said, we just had ours plain and I just arranged them until they were all kind of laying flat. And then um, I thought about putting some more like shredded cheese on top. But uh, some of the people in the family have like some cheese issues, you know, really picky about their cheeses. So that was another thing I figured they could add in the end if they wanted to. And then I just put it in the oven on 400 and let it cook until those tots on top were nice and golden brown. And then we served it up. I just laid out some onions, some shredded cheese, some sour cream, and some hot sauces as some options for toppings. There's my dog Buddy looking to see if anybody may have dropped a piece of cheese or something. So I just had a little bit of cheese on mine and some sour cream as well as some hot sauce. And that was our dinner. We all thought this meal was really good. I would make it again intentionally as a planned menu item and not just a throw together meal like on this day. I'm not sure why, but I always feel like I need dessert on days that we have Mexican food. So I had made up this pan of brownies earlier that I had cooling on this cutting board. And so that is what we had after we had our dinner on that night. Another dinner that we had this week was goulash. When I think of budget-friendly comfort food, I think of goulash. And to get started, I am just going to get my ground beef, my chopped onions, minced garlic, and bell peppers started cooking. I'm adding some cayenne pepper and some Italian seasoning. 
This meat was still partially frozen because I did not plan ahead for dinner on this day. And so we were kind of um, in a hurry and kind of doing the usual um, hurry up and figure out what we're going to have. And since we had just both walked in from work and we're both feeling a little um, tired and not even in the mood to cook, it was kind of a... I don't know. What do you want to have? Goulash? And he said, yep. So it was <laughs> in this um, mixing bowl or I mean, whatever this thing is measuring cup. I have two cups of water and three bouillon beef bouillon cubes. I'm going to use this tube of tomato paste and a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. And this is how I got my um goulash started it was really quite simple and easy and i've made goulash on my channel i don't know maybe three or four or five times it is a go-to for when we are just needing something really comforting and on this day we did um I make my goulash spicy, so that's why you're seeing me add chili powder and cayenne pepper to mine. Um, not too spicy for us, um, but we may be a little on the higher um, grade of spice than some families are. So I added a bunch of black pepper because that is my favorite spice of all spices. And so I'm just letting that simmer so that the noodles can soak up. Um, all of the flavoring in the in the broth and then I'm just giving it a stir and we'll be ready to eat this in no time. Goulash has got to be one of the oldest um, budget-friendly meals that there is out there to make and you can make it any way you want to. There's no right or wrong way. We just had some cottage cheese with ours. I put mine right in the bowl with my goulash. I like the way it tastes when you just kind of get a little scoop of the pasta and then some of the cottage cheese as well. I had some bread and butter on the side and I did put that right down in there so that it could soak up some of that broth too. And then um, um, yeah, there. I like to take some goulash and put it right inside of my bread and butter like a sandwich and eat it. Um, and then some Parmesan cheese just to finish it off. Moving on to the next dinner, we kept it simple and easy with a couple boxes of au gratin potatoes and smoked sausage. With a hectic work schedule, we weren't very focused on cooking complicated meals. And I had these boxed potatoes in the pantry from an Ollie's haul, and I keep smoked sausage on hand for an easy protein option that needs very little prepping. I just followed the box directions, omitting the butter because we were adding sausage and it would create its own grease. Of course we prefer homemade. Well, I do. My husband actually loves these box potatoes and we have a son who prefers instant mashed potatoes over real to each their own, I guess. It has just been a rough time lately and with winter um, just seeming to drag on and on and it's just zapping all of our energy. It was just really good to have these um, easy and quick 
food uh, resources in the house to lean on in these times. So I just made some canned peas to go on the side. Um, that was just something really quick and simple to make too. We do actually like peas, most of us anyway. So I just added some butter and salt to some canned peas and that was what was dinner. And here is how they turned out. We did have to let these sit and thicken up, but it did the trick. And it was um, a nice hot meal on a really cold January day. Not homemade, but not bad either. And sometimes you just need to give yourself a break and, you know, not make it such an importance to have fancy food or whatever you want to call it and lower your standards a little bit just to get your um, family fed and that's okay. Or maybe you don't know how to make homemade scalloped potatoes and so these box versions are um, really handy when you just need a recipe to follow. <music> We're still riding the budget-friendly meal train and we're rolling in with some good old spaghetti. To get the meat sauce started, I have my meat, some minced garlic, and some chopped onions in a pan. Once I got that meat uh, cooked up and drained, I added it to a smaller skillet with some spaghetti sauce for our 12-year-old because I'm going to be adding some diced tomatoes, some canned mushrooms, and some spaghetti sauce into ours and make it super chunky. I then just boiled up some noodles and added it right into the pan with the sauce so that it can all cook together. I have cooked spaghetti so many times and I think that we all know how to make spaghetti and we have our own way of making it. For breadsticks, I just divided some hot dog buns. I intentionally bought hot dog buns and put them in my freezer to make these breadsticks because hot dog buns cost 89 cents a pack at Walmart and garlic bread in the freezer section is over two dollars so this was a more cost-effective way for us to have lots and lots of breadsticks and my family really loves them so here is our finished spaghetti it was super good I make spaghetti different every time I make it I think and so this version is just a chunky vegetable filled spaghetti sauce and there's my sons with nothing in it <laughs> except the onions and the meat our breadsticks turned out perfect they were soft and um nice and buttery and like I said we just all really love our fancy breadsticks haha <laughs> just keeping it real with you guys I don't know if it's just um smart or if I'm cheap or maybe we're poor and we just don't know it. I guess it's all in your perspective. Either way, this meal was really good and we had lots of spaghetti leftovers to go in the freezer for spaghetti pie or baked spaghetti later on down the road. <music> This last meal comes in as a budget-friendly meal because I really wanted to go out to dinner and um, so an alternative was to cook what I would order at dinner at home. Because I already had potatoes on hand and canned corn, I just went out and found some steaks that were on the cheaper side. These are New York strips. I did find this three-pack of steaks for $18. And that is way less expensive than if we had gone out to order at a restaurant. I added some butter and some oil to my cast iron skillet. And then I'm just going to sear these steaks on each side. I had um, let these steaks sit out for 30 minutes before cooking them so that they could come to room temperature. And I also seasoned them well with some garlic powder and some seasoning or some meat tenderizer. I am now going to scrape up the um, bits in the bottom of my cast iron skillet. My skillet may be a little bit too hot. Um, I was having some issues with it kind of scorching and I didn't want that to happen. So 
my stove does have a mind of its own and even though I had turned it down it just still wasn't keeping an even temperature so I'm gonna blame it on my stove <laughs> and not on myself or my cast iron skillet I just added some butter to this and then I'm adding a good amount of garlic because we really like a lot of garlic so that is all up to you and so this is going to make a nice garlic buttery sauce and then I'm going to add these steaks back into the pan so that they can finish cooking and I'm just going to keep basting every now and then just to keep those steaks nice and juicy and I am also going to add some dried rosemary to this butter and garlic sauce and um, if I had fresh I would have used it but I didn't and since I wasn't going to um, buy any extra ingredients for this meal because I'm trying to keep it as cost um, friendly as I could and I had the um, dried uh, rosemary in my pantry already so I'm just breaking that up a little bit just to get that um, flavoring distributed throughout this butter and garlic and so then I'm going to stir that all together and then put my steak back in like I said and then just let those finish cooking we do cook our steak pretty much well done I um, like my steaks a little more on the medium side but Bill is a well done kind of person and I'm not really really picky when it comes to it every now and then I will like request to have mine made medium but anyway I can just kind of go with the flow with that and so all I'm doing is coming back every now and then and tipping my pan up so that I can get into all of those juices and then just um basting these steaks with that and this turned out to be so flavorful and my husband and son really enjoyed this. They said it was the best steak they ever had in their life. But we, I'm not sure about that. I mean, they were really good. But, you know, I think anytime we get something good at the time, it's the best we ever had in our life. At least according to my 12-year-old. that delicious steak that came together in just a matter of minutes and to go with it we had some half-baked potatoes which I just sliced and cooked on a foil lined uh, baking sheet with the cut side down I buttered the foil ahead of time so that the, those potatoes would have um, that nice butteriness on the bottom to cook into and then I just took a brush and painted the potato skins with butter and then salted them and they turned out just delicious and were so easy to make and we just really loved the little bit of a crisp edge that they got and then I just heated up some canned corn and that was our dinner for this night it was really quick it was really simple and pretty much um, affordable if you compare it to a takeout meal and that is our last what's for dinner for the week I want to thank you for coming by and watching my video if you enjoyed it please make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of my videos in the future bye for now Ooh.